Welcome to Untold Physio Stories Podcast, your perfect commute resource with physio failures, successes, interesting cases, and more from the physio and rehab world with your host, Drs. Andrew Rothschild and Urson Religioso. The future of medical documentation is here and it's revolutionizing the way we record patient visits. Introducing Comprehend PT, the groundbreaking HIPAA compliant AI scribe designed specifically for physical therapists. Imagine a world where the dialogue between PTs and patients is interpreted by AI into precise real time medical notes without lifting a pen or tapping a keyboard. Comprehend PT does just that, allowing healthcare professionals to stay engaged with patients rather than buried in documentation. Boost your efficiency, reduce claim denials, and liberate yourself from the burdens of manual note-taking with Comprehend PT. Join the revolution now at ComprehendPT.com. Untold Physio Stories listeners get 50% off their first month with code MMT50, and there's a free trial available. Sign up now. I use it every day in the clinic for virtual and live visits. I just speak to the patient, and at the end, hit Comprehend and a soap note's generated. I love it, and you will too. Welcome back to Untold Physio Stories. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E, with Modern Manual Therapy, Edge Mobility System, and my all-new online private network, The Eclectic Approach. Check that out, modmt.com slash members. So I had a case recently, a very high-level runner, teenager, female, about 16, 17 years old, um, apparently one of the best in the area. She had recurrent and chronic knee pain, that would go away with about a day of rest and then return as soon as she started running within 10, 15 minutes. So it seemed like a very simple thing to me since she was fit, motivated, uh, very athletic, pretty strong. Um, She had all the typical things that I kind of expected to find, uh, including a loss of hip flexion and internal rotation on the involved side, The involved side also had significant loss of ankle dorsiflexion and lateral tibial glide. So after giving her resets for both of those and giving it a week, I said, you know, we will return for the next week to start looking at your balance and your strengthening. Um, Also on the first day, I used the active force and found that she had significantly weakened hip flexors, knee extensors, and hip abductors. But again, Many times I don't necessarily prescribe strength on day one. I really want people to focus on on resetting the system. And occasionally when you get rid of that threat and you restore symmetry with the ability to load in the hip, the lumbar spine, and the ankle, sometimes strength and balance just take care of themselves. Uh, On visit two, she said that she was able to run probably... uh, 50% longer before the pain came back, but the pain um, was very similar. And instead of it just being around generally um, the inferior pole of the patella, now it was more laterally in the joint. And she said she noticed some clicking. On that visit, I found that she had possibly like some lateral meniscal issues. She had kind of a springy end feel and um, a pivot shift test there was a little bit of a click with that. It was very, very mild. And otherwise I couldn't really get her to reproduce it with any kind of weight bearing lunge or squat or twisting on her, um, in a closed chain position, like a single leg squat or single leg lunge with a hip twist. Uh, with some distraction, I had her father hold her thigh down and prone. I did some distraction, some rotations, which is an old school, Uh, Syriac technique, I learned to reduce meniscal derangements. However, I didn't do like the high velocity, high amplitude craziness that Syriacs used to do. Um, I just do like a a long distraction with some light rotations and gradually move them into extension. So that improved um, her knee extension, got rid of the springy end feel. I taught her father how to do the same thing at home. Um, I also added hip flexor strengthening, hip extensor strengthening, and hip abductor strengthening, mostly uh, lots of closed chain stuff. Had her continue with her sets. At this point, she was able to run maybe three or four miles with 
uh, without pain, but then every time the pain came back, it came back just as sharp, about seven, eight out of 10. It was very limiting. Uh, I suggested that, you know, she, she try some rest. She try uh, increasing her sleep time and maybe some tart cherry and other anti-inflammatory stuff like ginger and smoothies, um, just to kind of see if we can get down, cut down any inflammation. Uh, and it was, it went th like that for maybe one more visit and granted there's two or three weeks in between visits, one more visit. She said, there's not really any significant change and the pain was kind of increased. Um, and she didn't really gain any distance still running about only three or four miles without this severe knee pain. So I suggest she, they said, do you think she, she gets some scans? And at this point, especially for such a young athlete who's otherwise fit with no comorbidities. Um, I just said, yes, you know, maybe you, get, you should go see a scan. You should go get a scan, um, go see an ortho, see what they say, but just don't take IT band friction syndrome uh, or runner's knee as a kind of generic diagnosis. And I really want them to try to rule out potentially some female athlete triad because I was worried about that. Um, she, as a runner, is a little on the thinner side, and I definitely would want her to be a bit more developed. And I did ask her father uh, privately over an email, you know, has she missed any cycles or how's her eating and things like that. So I don't hear from them for about three or four weeks, and then they scheduled a follow-up out of the blue saying that she was mostly pain-free. So I said, you know, what, what happened? Um, what do you think did it? Was it a combination of the strengthening or the resets and, you know, the... The girl just smiled and said, you know, honestly, what it was was I took four days off straight with rest. I said, oh, have you never taken four days off before? She said, no, you know, I would I would rest one day and then it would feel better. So I would just go run again and it would, I would just irritate it. So um, because she, she was just, I guess, so fed up, she decided to take off for four days straight. And then now she's able to run. And, and according, uh, her coach basically uh, monitors it and you know they've they've added a lot of the strength training like deadlifts and um, unilateral farmers carries that I suggested but her coach also does not make her run as much and they definitely are training that recovery so I'm going to pass this off now to Andrew we're going to do a little asynchronous podcast and see what he has to say or what his thoughts are on the case hey everyone Dr. Andrew Rothschild here with uh, following up with uh, Urson's case on his adolescent runner. And I thought it was a really interesting case. Um, I think one thing that uh, to highlight though is the, the, the power of some of those resets. If you think back to the beginning of the case where, where the athlete was only really able to run uh, maybe just a few minutes before being limited by knee pain and literally after a couple sessions was really back up to three to four miles before being limited by knee pain. That's really uh, a significant change in such a short amount of time. The other thing I was thinking of while Erson was talking about his case, which then he kind of started talking about uh, at the end, was especially with runners and, and females, things to consider is uh, red S, so relative energy deficiency syndrome, where um, people are training and they're at a high level, but they're not fueling enough to complement that training. So you see that a, a lot with distance runners or uh, endurance athletes, uh, certainly in the gymnastics community, uh, in sports where there's an emphasis on maintaining a low body weight, uh, and that can really open, open them up to overuse injuries because they're not providing their bodies with the calories and the protein and the important things from a recovery standpoint. And the other thing that's really interesting, and I think is a lot of times is under, uh, underemphasized and also underestimated, uh, as well as I think on like social media, if you're, you know, if you're a PT listening and you're following people on Twitter and Instagram, there's the whole mantra sometimes of uh, just, just loading it and doing these in, in, in that kind of uh, mindset when a lot of times rest is really appropriate and especially for Again, endurance athletes, people who do a lot of training. I'm going to bring in gym, gymnasts again because they do a lot of many hours a day, multiple days in a row. Uh, same thing with runners. A lot of times, especially in uh, scholastic sports, uh, where the, the, the coaching is not always uh, at, at a certain level sometimes. They're doing this. It's sort of this, that's the way it's been done is on a regular basis. Uh, and so 
you know, the power of rest sometimes in recovery. Uh, so sometimes really questioning people about how much rest have you really taken? And like this, like this patient said, you know, rested one day, felt better, then went right back to it. I mean, it really probably required a little bit more rest. And the fact that just those four days rest had such a powerful effect, a powerful effect on her with her ability to run longer distances without that sharp knee pain really goes to show how important that is in a lot of cases. So it's one of the things to consider that um, doesn't always have to be young athletes, but people who might do a repetitive stress job or activity or other kind of sport, even a, a weekend warrior type, sometimes uh, rest takes a, is an important factor and the recovery takes longer uh, than what people might realize. All right, thanks so much for listening and we'll, uh, we'll be back at this podcast together again soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And next time, hopefully, Andrew and I will be back together instead of recording asynchronously. Anyway, make sure to rate Untold Physio Stories five stars wherever you listen to podcasts. Hit that subscribe button. And as always, you guys have a great day.